Hello everyone, welcome to another very exciting tutorial today. Uh, I thought uh, it's a good idea to show you how you can create some sort of a progress bar. Uh, let me show you how it actually works. So if I refresh the page, you'll see that the progress uh, starts working and then imagine there is a there is like a progress for any kind of action. When it, that action is finished, you can see that it automatically, when I clicked here, it finished the progress so again it will start the progress and say there is like a backing call or whatever when you click on the finish progress it actually fills the whole progress and then it can basically redirect or switch to whatever action that this progress bar was indicating so as you might know there are two different types of progress indicators one is these one is the call the one that is called deterministic which basically means that you pretty much have an idea of the progress of your action but many times or most of the times Usually you don't have it uh, when you're working with the web, especially when you're, you know, waiting for a page to load or you, you're you sending a backend API and you want to see when it's done. Um, you don't know uh, when the progress is going to be uh, finished or what is the progress at the moment. And that is called indeterministic. For example, in this case, this one is indeterministic. So basically it starts with some predefined you know steps or values that it increases in this case by five and then when I, because i know when my api call returns i can literally call the 100 percent and it will ultimately just go and finishes it and then i can redirect to another page so without further ado uh, let's get started uh, i'm going to go ahead and create a new prototype in uh, kotus online editor so here, what am I going to do is, as always, I'm going to create a container div, and then within the container, I'm going to create a div with class progress bar. Within the progress bar, I'm just going to add track. And then within the track, I'm going to add a div called progress. And uh, the reason being that this container is obviously is wherever you put the uh, container you want in your page, but the actual put the actual progress bar starts here so the div with class progress bar and then within that we have the track and this track is pretty much the uh, the gray kind of uh, not fulfilled bar over here and the progress is literally this blue uh, so basically progress the div with class progress here indicates the, uh, the sort of progress of that bar so let's get started and go ahead and style this a little bit so i'm going to give the container a width of 80 percent maybe uh, that's okay. Then the progress bar will have the width of 100%. And then let's give it a height of 30 pixel. Let's see how it looks like. And then I will set the position to be relative here. And then I'm going to go ahead and style the track div. This is going to have a width of 100% uh, and height of 100% give it a background of maybe CCC so you can see how it looks right now maybe 30 pixel is a little bit too high I can change it to maybe 10 pixel or 20 pixel depending on how big you want your progress bar to look so I usually for the track I go ahead and add a border radius you can even give this border radius to the progress bar so I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a um, radius of 3 pixel or even more let's give it 50 per 50 pixel uh, so that it's nice and rounded but now you have to set the overflow to be hidden so that it actually takes the shape now what I want to do is go ahead maybe change this a little bit smaller maybe 60% and then I would give it a margin of 20 pixel and auto so that it centers my progress bar uh, maybe even higher on the top margin so now we have the track what about the progress so I'm going going here and say progress bar track and then progress and here I can choose a color uh, I took one from the kotus.com or, or kotus uh, UI um, sort of library uh, in the color section I'm just gonna go ahead and take one of these colors let's take this one Going back here, I give it a background color of the color that I copied, and then I will give it a width 100% and height of 100%, right? So now you can see that we also have the progress, right? 
So again, we have a track and within the track, we have the progress. We went ahead and start the track, gave it a, you know, a shade of gray. And then we gave the progress uh, inside the track, a background color that will indicate the color of the bar that, you know, goes at the end. And then the width and height of 100%, which will fulfill the width and height of the track, which actually is based on these two values, right? So, so far so good. Now, how are we going to like uh, work with the sort of the progress? The way you can do it is define the transform. So I'm just going to go ahead and say transform scale X and say 50. Well, not 50 because the value of a scale is between 0 and 1. So I'm going to say 0 0.5, right? So now you can see that the, the progress is actually uh, half of the size that we have. But what we need to do is set the transform origin to be 0 so that it actually starts from right here. So now you can see that if in JavaScript I play with this value, I can basically play with the sort of the scale of this progress bar, right? So if I say, for example, 0 0.1, it's going to start from here. And if I say 1, it will be finished. So how am I going to do this? Pretty easy. What am I going to do is come here, create a uh, reference to the progress. So I'm just going to call it progress bar, document, query selector. And then this is going to be my progress. You can go ahead and maybe say track dot progress if you have multiple you know elements in your page with the class progress you want to basically downscope it to the one over here you can go ahead and add this as well if you have tracks but anyways so now we have a reference to our progress bar right so in order to show this sort of um, continuous uh, feeling of this uh, bar what am I going to use in JavaScript is set interval method right so set interval accepts a function and then within that function I can do whatever I want and then I can define the intervals right so let's say the intervals are gonna be thousand milliseconds which is one second and then within this what am I gonna do is up here I'm going to create a variable called progress and set it initially to zero and then each time I'm in set interval function. So basically on every one second, I'm just going to add progress. I'm just going to increase it by maybe five right now. Now I have this. Now the next thing I want to do, I want to create a function called set progress, right? And it accepts a progress value. So here what I want to do is say progress bar dot style transform equals to and then scale x it's very important it's not scale it's scale x because we are scaling on the x-axis scale x and then i use the concatenation here uh, plus plus and then say progress but you know that progress within the using the transform is between 0 and 1 but this progress that we have is going to be from 0 to 100 so we have to basically make sure that we map the value of uh, 0 to 100 to 0 to 1. So basically we can divide this by 100 and then that would give us the value between 0 and 1, right? So now here I can go ahead and easily set the call this function set progress with the progress value that I increased, right? As easy as that. Now you can see that it literally starts running the progress bar. So the next thing I want to do is Right now, you can see that it's very rigid movement. Like it's like did, did, did. Now, in order to make it more smooth transition, I can add a transition to the progress. I can say transition, transition uh, all, and then 0 0.3 seconds. Now you will see that when I save this, when it refreshes, it actually starts with a nicer kind of smooth movement between the steps that I add over here. Right. So, so far, so good. Maybe what one, one thing you want to do is uh, usually when you use progress bar is reacting to an action. Uh, what I'm going to add here is a button. So let's add a button and just let's give it a class done. Right. And then here I'm going to say, uh, let me just 
make sure that this function doesn't call. Uh, so now what am I going to do is say process or progress finished, right? I'm uh, going to give it a little bit of a styling to this done button. So I'm just going to add a padding 10 pixel, a margin maybe uh, 5 pixel. I'm going to remove the outline from the button and then maybe give it a border of 1 pixel solid CCC and then color of maybe 999. Uh, so not that bad. Um, so now let's say this uh, sort of set timeout started based on an action in your page, right? And then because it's indeterministic, you don't know how far you need to go. So right now we added progress five. Um, you want to ultimately uh, set the progress to 100%, right? So how are we going to do that? I'm going to have a reference to this button here. So I'm just going to say done. Done trigger is document dot query query selector if I write it correctly and then this is called done. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here. So now we have a reference to the done button and then I can say done trigger done trigger dot add event listener click and then pass a function and this is the function that I want to do when I want to set the progress. So it's really easy. If you can see here in the set progress what we do, we increase the progress by 5 and then set the set the progress to the to that number of progress which consecutively calls this set progress function. So what we need to do here is set the progress to 100, right? And then call the set progress to that number, right? can even go ahead and add the 100 over here if you want. You don't need to set this here. Um, then the next thing is that because set interval by nature will continue in, in, but to, to infinite, like it's going to go uh, forever, we want to make sure that we stop the uh, operation when we reach to the 100, to the number 100, right? So how am I going to do that? I'm going to put this set interval function assign it to a variable or a constant in this case interval id right and then i would check if progress is more than 100 then i can just clear that interval and then pass the interval id right that's exactly what i want to do when i set the progress to 100 when i click that button as well right so i'm going to come here uh, copy this here I mistakenly cut it. So now you can see what happens is that it will continue calling set progress, but then when the progress is more than 100, it actually clears the interval. So it's not going to call this function again. Let me show you how it actually affects. So I'm going to comment this out for now, and I'm going to take away the overflow hidden on the progress bar, right? So I'm just going to say like this. So let's wait and see what happens when it reaches to 100. You will see that it actually passes this. Take a look. So it's going to go, okay. Now 90, 95, 100. And it will continue to go on, but that's not what we want, right? When the progress reaches 100, we want to clear the interval. So now, for the sake of time, I'm going to change this 5 to 10. So it goes a little bit faster. So you'll see that when it reaches to, when the progress goes over 100, it actually literally stops the progress, right? So now you can see that it stops right over there. So the problem is that we check the progress more than 100 uh, and then we call it. But right now in this interval, the progress is not uh, more than 100. So we have to actually say if it's more than or equal 100. Now, if you notice, it's going to stop right over here. Take a look. There you go. So now it, the progress is more, because we increased by 10, it sets the progress to 100. And then because it's more than or equal to 100, it will clear the interval. So this set interval function uh, will not get called again. And if I start 
So let's say your API call now returned. If I click on this, you'll see that it right away fills in the whole sort of bar. Uh, the question might arise uh, that uh, what are we going to use for this? Because this is indeterministic. We don't know how and when our API returns or you know the operation that this progress bar is indicating will will finish, right? Uh, I would suggest you think about what that operation is. For example, if it's an API call, you pretty much know uh, how long it will take for an API call to return, right? It might be, depending on your infrastructure, it could be from, you know, some milliseconds to maybe one second or maybe two seconds. I mean, two seconds is not very good, but in case you know that it's going to take two seconds, since you change this interval every one second, you both can play with this number and also with this number, right? So if I say 500 here and then I increase it by 10, you will see that it's going to go faster. And then when your API called, you basically call this uh, call these two uh, two methods over here to make sure that your progress. And then maybe ultimately you do I don't know like location redirect to whatever slash you know uh, authenticated for example uh, something like that um, so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i'm gonna put this uh, link to this uh, prototype um, down in the description let me know if you have any questions or comments this was the simplest way i just wanted to let you know the concept of how to set the intervals and set the progress this method actually works for the deterministic progress bars as well. You can also go ahead and you know put some sort of a div that moves with this progress bar showing the progress. So you, you literally can see the number as uh, 0 to 100 as well as an indicator to the user. But most of the time your progress bars will be indeterministic, which means that you really need to play with it. So for example, right now my API returned and then I can just you know call these two methods and then it will fulfill the whole progress. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please, please, please go ahead and do and press the bell, uh, bell icon. Uh, next tutorial will be continuation of our PHP backend track on creating the login and sign up. I'm going to incorporate this. This was actually a request by one of our uh, awesome fans, uh, very good idea. I'm going to incorporate this when they, in the login section, when the user authenticates. We want to have like some sort of progress bar and then go to the, you know, to the admin page or whatever. So stay tuned and see you next time. Have a great day and night. Goodbye.